Chapter 8 Refusal to Admit Fault The phone rang. Randall looked at it confused. His room phone never rang. You going to answer that? Chris raised his brow as he glanced up from their paperwork they had been looking through. Uh, yeah. Randall reached over and lifted the receiver. Hello? There was a bunch of commotion on the other end, and Randall had to move the receiver away from his ear. Hearing a voice, he pushed it against his ear again. Hello? Randall! Yoshimasa was afraid, and Randall could hear it in his voice. Randall's eyes widened. Yoshimasa, what's wrong, my friend? My life is in danger, Randall. They know that I know, and that I heard more today than the last time when I told you, and they are following me. My wife pointed them out on a street outside my home. Randall shook his head as he looked at Chris, who was using his hands to ask what was happening. He got back to Yoshimasa on the phone. Yoshimasa, don't panic, buddy. You don't want to panic, trust me. Randall, it's my life and the lives of my family. This is my country, Randall. I'm stuck here. Yoshimasa was near tears. Randall felt like a dick. Yoshimasa, I know. I'm sorry, my friend. I didn't mean to belittle your feelings. Are you sure they're watching you? Take another look, please. Maybe it was just a coincidence earlier. Yoshimasa was silent for a moment as he slowly and slightly parted his curtain to look out in front of his house. They are gone now, Randall. Randall let out a deep breath. Good. See, Yoshimasa, it was just paranoia. I'm paranoid too, my friend. Yoshimasa nodded, though Randall couldn't see him. Randall, I should tell you what else I heard today. This time I purposely eavesdropped. Randall raised an eyebrow and looked at Chris. Really now? Yoshimasa, bad boy you are. Sure, tell me, I need to know. Yoshimasa took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Okay, both men, the same men as before, were in the security room today, hiding in the coat room. I went in to find Joel. I heard whispers and followed them, stopping short at the crack door. I peeked in and could see the two men, and they were so engrossed in their secret that they paid no mind to the fact that they were being watched. I heard the Chinese scientist talking to the American, Brad. Randall interrupted him. Yoshimasa, why were they hiding in the security room? Yoshimasa chuckled. The bigwigs were here today, scanning everyone's desks and offices for something they were hunting for. It was the only room they were not allowed to enter to check. Security is protected. Randall nodded. I see, that's right. What were they looking for, Yoshimasa? Randall was curious to know. I do not know, Randall. They did not say they were looking for anything certain, but I could tell it was of great importance. Yoshimasa smiled to himself, knowing they hadn't found whatever it was. Randall chuckled too. Okay, so what did you overhear, Yoshimasa? Yoshimasa apologized. I'm sorry, my friend. I meant to get on with it while my wife is downstairs and cannot hear me. I heard the American scientist ask him, Woman Zula Shama. Randall grabbed a sheet of paper quickly and wrote the words down. What have we done? Okay, Yoshimasa, what else? Yoshimasa nodded. Yes, then the Chinese scientist replied with, Woman Yong Yo Shijie. Randall turned a shade of white and looked at Chris before he wrote it down. We've owned the world. Yoshimasa began again. There's more, Randall. Randall nodded. Okay, Yoshimasa, I'm ready. Yoshimasa cleared his throat. The American scientist was upset, and I saw him move close to the Chinese scientist. He said, Woman Zheng Zai Sha Si Su Yoran. Randall wrote it as he said it. We are killing people. Yoshimasa continued, The Chinese scientist sounded disgusted and evil, Randall. It made my stomach turn. He replied to the American, Bu Ya Rang Tam and Sheng Xian. Randall shook his head. Unbelievable, Yoshimasa. Shame the hell on them. Randall was translating as he raged to Yoshimasa. Do not let them survive. Yoshimasa stopped. That is all I heard before the two moved quickly to the door and saw me leave the room with my folder, Randall. Randall shook his head and slid the paper over to Chris. He then got back with Yoshimasa. You've done the right thing, my friend. You're going to save millions. You can ask for asylum in our country if need be, Yoshimasa. Yoshimasa shook his head. Thank you, Randall, but I cannot leave my country or my family. I will remain here and die here. Randall and Yoshimasa hung up, and Randall looked at Chris. So, how's that grab at you? Chris was still reading. 
So this is what, the second conversation Yoshimasa overheard? Randall nodded. Yes, hang tight. Randall got up and opened the small fridge, lifted the glass shelving and pulled clear tape from it and brought forth a small piece of paper. He walked back to the table and handed it to Chris. This is the first. Chris raised a brow. Good hiding spot. He opened the paper and read it and then looked back at the other paper. He looked at Randall. They purposely let the virus loose. A weapon we all made for the enemy. They used against us. Seems about right. Randall nodded. We have to get this information to the American soldiers and CDC in charge of our program. Chris agreed. But what's more important than knowing who turned it loose and why is the mega vaccine I created and now have the only formula for in a hiding place. That is what they were looking so adamantly for today and could not find. Randall raised a brow. Wow, you really are a badass, Doc. Chris smiled. Thanks, but no thanks. Badass is not on my list of needed traits. Randall chuckled. Okay, Doc. So how do we get this info where it needs to go and your vaccine formula? Who gets that and how? Chris nodded. What about you? They wouldn't suspect you, would they? When are you due to go home? Randall raised an eyebrow. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact, and no, they shouldn't suspect me. If anything, they should suspect Brad, the traitor bastard. Chris nodded. Exactly. Well, our country's officials will have that last word. So take it all with you and turn it in to the proper places. I know our country truly needs that vaccine, Randall. Randall thought about that. What's to say I can't leave tonight, Chris? I have no pressing business here tomorrow. I was just being lazy. Chris shook his head with eyes wider than necessary. Yes, tonight would sure work best. I'll have to go back down to the 21st floor to my own room and get the flash drive. Should you come with me just in case? Randall twisted his mouth in different directions, debating it. It's best if I don't, Chris. If anyone sees us together, that will raise suspicions with the right people. Chris nodded his head. Yeah, you're right again. Well, if we're done here, I'll go back to my room and you can call to reserve your plane ticket, and I'll get the flash drive and bring it right back up to you. Having it in my possession is worrisome, to say the least. Randall cocked his head, looking at Chris while he talked. I can imagine how worrisome since I'm already worried and I haven't touched it yet. Chris smiled. Gather your balls, man. The world depends on you. Chris took the elevator back to his own floor and made it to his room without incident. He lifted the mattress and took the flash drive out from under it. He walked with it over to the table and sat down, lifting his foot to take his shoe off. He'd walk on it for just a few more minutes, just for safety's sake. He left his room and stepped back onto the elevator, riding it up to Randall's floor. The door opened and he stepped off the elevator. As he walked toward Randall's room, he could hear voices in the hallway around the far corner. He hurried and knocked lightly. Randall opened and Chris hurried inside. Shut it. Randall creased his brows. What's the rush? Chris shook his head but signaled with his finger that someone was walking by the door. I heard them talking. Randall nodded. Oh yeah, can't be too careful, can we? 